Hi, I'm Albert, and welcome to a very quick tip on how to get vector graphics with the help of an AI. Famously, these new AIs produce very low resolution results, usually 512 by 512 pixels. Now, that's not useful for any printing applications, for example, or making logos, making icons that need to be used at higher resolutions. But with just a couple tricks and completely free software, you can get a result like this out of a very rough sketch like this um, in I'd say under 30 minutes. So let's get started. Have fun. To do this, most importantly, you need a working installation of Stable Diffusion. I have one running locally on my GPU with this web UI, but there are many other options that could work for you. For example, if you don't have an NVIDIA GPU or you're working on a Mac. So in order to get that working, just check the very first link in my description and find out what works best for you. Next, you're gonna need an image manipulation program such as Photoshop, GIMP is fine, or any other option is fine. We're gonna do very simple things here. And lastly, you need a software like Inkscape. Inkscape is free, it's for vector manipulation. You can also use Illustrator, that is fine. And the first step we're gonna do actually takes place in Photoshop. Why? Well, because I like controlling my AI results. So I'm gonna be using the so-called image to image algorithm, which gets results based on an input image and not just a text prompt. What's super important for vector graphics is that you get a transparent background, right? If you're gonna make an icon or a logo, you don't wanna have it have a big black square or just have it be square, right? So with the image to image algorithm, I found a technique that makes it very easy to remove that background in the end. And the way I do it is I give it a very bright color, some, some gross color that's not going to appear in your final result, like this purple, right? If you, of course, want this purple in your icon, just give it a different color. And now I'm going to very vaguely draw the icon I want in here with just the paintbrush tool. So let's say I'm making a logo for a restaurant, for example, right? Um, like a lighthouse with some waves, and I need to set my paintbrush to 100% hardness, right? We don't want any softness going on because vector graphics famously have, you know, very straight lines and clear colors. So I need to turn the hardness up and um, let's draw some waves, right? So let's make them blue. You're already picking the colors here. They're gonna be quite similar in the result. So pick them here and I'm just gonna draw some waves. And now I want a gray rock. So I'm just gonna draw that behind the waves and give that rock some greenery. Just a little moss on top maybe. And now comes the lighthouse. I want the lighthouse to be the classic lighthouse. So I'm gonna give it white and red. Give it the stripes. And a little roof here. With, of course, our yellow light. Nice, so this looks obviously really childish. This is not what we want in our final result. So let's export this and bring it into Stable Diffusion for the next very important step. Export it as a JPEG is fine, and call it one, because we're gonna do several different iterations here. Eight quality is fine. We're not gonna use this finally anyways. And now we go into Stable Diffusion. Select Image to Image Algorithm, and bring your image in here. Now, Prompt is very important for this kind of work. We don't want a photorealistic lighthouse, right? We want something that works for vector. And I found that vector illustration works quite well in the prompt. So vector illustration of a lighthouse on a mossy rock in the ocean is very good. Now I've tried some crosshatch shading to get kind of a nice illustrated look. That's worked sometimes for me, so you can leave it in there if you want that and detailed is nice. So next sampling steps, 20 is fine at first. Batch count is just how many pictures you want in the result. I have a good GPU, it's pretty fast, so I'm just gonna go for, uh, let's do six. CFG scale is fine the way it is at seven, and denoising strength, it depends on how much you want, right? This first step is so rough, I'm gonna go pretty high. It can go, it can stray very far from what I gave it here. So the higher it is, the further you allow it to stray away from your input image. I'm gonna put it at 60, see what happens. Don't change the width or height. This AI was trained on 512 by 512 images and going any higher than this gets some weird results. So don't bother, you can always upscale later 
and especially with vector graphics, we don't need a high result here. That's all later. So let's click generate and see what happens. And here are our results. You can tell it's already much better than what we painted. There's a little too much detail for my taste here, but you can tell it really understood what we wanted. It got those stripes on the lighthouse. Isn't that cool? I like this one. This one's really cool. That one's nice. It fits with the color scheme. I like that. So what we're going to do next is we're going to copy the results we want and combine them in Photoshop or GIMP. So I like the tower on this one the most. So I'm going to copy this and paste it in here. So I don't necessarily like the top of this. Now because we have a solid color, we don't need to do very much trickery. We can just select this background color. It may have changed slightly from the original, but don't worry about that. And just paint over it. It's really that simple. Just paint over the parts we don't like. Super easy. Now the ocean is also not very pretty, so I'm just gonna... I'm only gonna keep the tower itself. Wonderful. So that's that's great. That's a lot left of our image. And now here I like the rocks on this one. This is a cool rock. I do enjoy that one. So let's copy this. Now here we have to get a little more creative, of course. I'm going to select the rock, mask that, just bring it up here. It's okay if it doesn't match up perfectly. That's really fine. We're going to send it through again. That's a good rock. Now I'm going to try to find a good ocean for us. Hmm, I think it actually might be in that one. So let's let's bring that back. Let's just um, mask that nicely and draw in some white. We like our ocean here. Okay, so I don't love that it's going out of the image, of course, and the shadow is kind of weird here in the ocean. So I'm gonna um, just gonna change that to black and just fully erase that. It's fine. It's really fine. It's gonna change in the next step anyway. And the tower I like most is actually this black one here. So I'm gonna copy that and paste that in here. And so like that, mask it. Wonderful. Now make sure the background is the same color. So we really don't want a change because it is sensitive. If we kept that square in there in the different purple, it would um, it would know. So let's make sure that's all gone. It would it would leave that square in there in the next AI iteration. Okay, that's pretty cool. So it did erase our mossy rock. I don't love that. I think in here was a little bit of mossy rock that we could leave. Hmm. Not really. So let's draw those back in. Just fully paint them back in. Great! It's already looking much, much, much better than our original illustration. Our original looked like this. So that's an improvement, isn't it? Let's save this as iteration number two. Remember our iteration rule? Just call it two. JPEG. Turn up the quality a little. We have more quality now. And import it back in here. Now let's see if we have to change our prompt a little. In, let's call this, just give it some, in the ocean waves, give it that word wave. On an island, let's name that an island. Island with mossy rocks in the ocean waves. And now you have to check your settings to see if the parentheses actually do something. So that's somewhere here. Yeah, use text in parentheses to make model pay more attention to text. Yeah, that's what we want. If you want it to pay less attention to something, put it in the right angle parentheses. I don't know the word for those. <laughs> and now you can turn up the sampling steps a little, give it some more work to do. And maybe we don't want so many gradients, right? There, It's not really a gradient, but it's, it's getting a little smooth there. So let's... Um, Let's add some clear lines to that prompt and see what happens. Denoising strength can go down a little because we are quite close to the result we want. And let's leave the rest and click Generate. Here we go. Okay, it did make the mossy rocks. The waves are getting funky. I like that. That's pretty cool. It's getting a little gradienty. This is adding a lot of colors, but still very much could be turned into a vector. That's kind of a nice one. I like that island. 
That one's fun. So we can really pick our, um, we can really choose our favorites here. So this is, this is a nice one with the rock, kind of the lighthouse stuck in there. I like that. So let's take this one. I like most of the lighthouse as well. It's adding a little drop shadow here. So I uh, don't know what to think of that, but if I pick a wave, I like that one's kind of cool. It's like breaking on there. Actually, I like that island a little too. Actually, I prefer this completely, so that's cool. And now I just want my yellow back. So the yellow top of this lighthouse remains my favorite. So let's take that one. It's the most clear one. It really makes sense as a, as a vector. So let's mask that one and make sure the color remains the same. Here we go. Now all I need to do is remove this shadow here and we're ready to turn this into a vector. So export this a final time in Photoshop or GIMP in a good quality. Let's go PNG this time. Call it like export to vector, save. And now we bring it into Inkscape. So what we need to do here is import our image and turn it into the final vector. The way we do that is we click File, Import, select our Export to Vector PNG, and now in here we can turn it to whatever we want. It's not that important. I'm going to do smooth. The computer's fast enough. Embed, make sure it's not linked, because otherwise if the photo is missing in the original folder, it's going to be missing here too, and click OK. And here we go. Now, the feature we need is here under Path. Trace Bitmap, because this is a bitmap. To summarize it real quick, a bitmap is an image that has individual pixels, right? It describes the image with pixel colors. And vectors are mathematical, right? It's described in curves and colors. So we're going to trace bitmap to turn it into a vector graphic. We click here, a menu will open up over here, and we need to select multicolor, detection mode colors, and you can tell it's already working. So you can turn up the scans depending on how many details you want, right? We do have a couple details in that rock. So around 15, I see it's not getting that much better. So that's good. You can click smooth, right? To just make sure that there's no weird corners and just play around with these settings. You can also click apply and just see what happens and make sure you hide the image in the background to see if you really have a good result. Yeah, see there's some weirdness here, so you really need to play around with the settings. There's like a transparent part there that I don't love. So just play around, undo that, and here we have kind of a cool result. So I hid the original image. You can even delete it to make sure it doesn't accidentally feed back into this. And now you can remove the background quite easily because it's just one big hunk of color, right? So double click and you can see which path it is and hide it and it's gone. So of course, if this is for a professional application, you'd have to clean it up a little bit. There's a little weirdness going on here, right? You can delete these areas or just try to trace the bitmap a bit more cleanly. In a final step, you can just select this, export, set it to a plain SVG or an Inkscape, whatever you need, and you have your result. Now, I'm sure you can come up with a much better use case for your new vector graphic than I did in this example. But my point here is you now have a file that you can print anywhere on a small sign, on a big sign, on t-shirts. You can give it to a company if you designed a logo for them. And uh, that opens up a whole new world for AI results that were famously very low resolution. So I hope this technique is helpful to you. If it was, I would love a subscription. That's the best support you can give me right back and a like on this video. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment and I will try to answer as many as I can. So see you soon and have fun with Stable Diffusion.